centripetal force and centrifugal force. So in uh, this tutorial we're gonna talk about the motion when we have an object that has a path of action that is a circle. And we'll start with a simple example where the uh, object's going to be a ball and the path of action is going to be a circle because it's on a flat surface uh, but there's a wall that is in the shape of a circle and the ball is going to go around the circle and uh, then uh, out the front. So let's just look at what that uh, what that looks like. So there's the ball. So you see, very simple. It um, I give it a velocity, and it moves around the circle, and then notice that it comes out straight uh, when it flies out the uh, other end. Okay, so if you think about the forces that are involved, uh, the law of inertia says if there's no uh, unbalanced force, then the object's going to move in a straight line, which it does as soon as it exits um, the track. So, uh, but while it's on the on the board, because of that uh, vertical wall that's uh, in the form of a circle, the wall is all the time exerting a force uh, on the ball. That force uh, exerted by the wall is in the inward direction, just like the floor exerts a, an upward force on you. Uh, well, that um, force is what is deflecting the path of action to go in a circle. So any force that causes the path of action to be a circle we call a centripetal force. Uh, centripetal means uh, towards the center. Uh, so in this case the uh, force exerted by the wall on uh, the ball as it goes around uh, is an example of a centripetal force. On the other hand there's another concept which is very useful when we have a circular path of action and that is the apparent outward pull uh, which we call the centrifugal force. Now uh, this uh, force is in uh, quotes because in reality uh, the reason that there seems to be an outward pull is uh, entirely due to inertia. In other words uh, the ball normally wants to go in a straight line. Going in a straight line would take it away from the center of the circle, uh, so the ball uh, seems to be being pulled away from the center of the circle, uh, but in reality that's just uh, inertia. Here's uh, another example of basically the same thing. Uh, if you're in your car and you're turning in a tight turn, so that's uh, like a tight circle, uh, it seems as if you're being pulled to the outer bank, to the outside of the curve. Uh, there's really no force uh, per se that's pulling you. Uh, you're sitting in your car and by inertia you would tend to uh, want to move in a straight line. Uh, however, because the car is uh, turning, uh, you feel yourself um, being pulled towards the outside uh, of the curve. Here's uh, yet another example. I'm going to put a bucket of rusty nails uh, upside down over my head. So, see, there's the bucket of nails. I'm going to put it over my head. So let's think about what's uh, going on here. So uh, the bucket is upside down, the nails are inside, and yet the nails don't fall out. It's as if there's some upward uh, force that's pushing them into the bottom of the bucket. 
Uh, again, in reality, what happens is the um, nails by inertia, as they're moving, they would tend to go in a straight line. Uh, the bucket is moving in a circular path of action, so in a sense the bucket is uh, running into the nails, but from the perspective of the nails, it's as if they're being pressed into the bottom of the bucket. And this concept of a centrifugal force acting to uh, push the nails into the bucket is useful for uh, understanding a lot of uh, different types of motion. Uh, let's look at an example where this appears in um, Wile E. Coyote. So you see there he's uh, on rocket skates. So he's traveling, he goes around in this uh, circle and he goes all the way around uh, without falling down because it's as if there's some uh, centrifugal force that's pushing him uh, upward and, and that's why that he doesn't uh, fall down when he is uh, upside down in this uh, scene. Um, we can do the same thing as a demonstration. We have a ball with a track. Uh, so we... So, in that case... In the first case, it was not going fast enough to stay on the track and it falls off. But in the second case, it was going faster and it goes all the way around uh, and then flies out the other end. So, uh, here you see if it's released high enough uh, and has enough speed uh, when it's uh, at the upside down on this uh, track, the centrifugal force can be uh, large enough to um, keep it from falling off. Uh, now, notice that uh, if you don't have enough speed on the track, then the ball falls uh, down. So the centripetal um, force depends on the speed and it depends on the radius of the track. Now, not surprisingly, the faster you go, the more centripetal force you have. But if you have a, a given speed, then the tighter the circle, the bigger the centripetal force. So in this case, the two motorcyclists, if they're going the same speed uh, in miles per hour, uh, then the one on the inner uh, turn has a greater centrifugal force than the one on the outer turn. So uh, tighter the turn for a given speed, the larger the centrifugal force. Let's uh, see this in an example from uh, Jackass 2. So they're going to ride these motorcycles and go on this uh, mini loop. Now, these motorcycles don't go very fast, and because of that, the radius has to be small. Uh, that was not successful. Uh, let's uh, try that again. So that was almost, uh, almost did it. So they, um, they were smart, uh, I hesitate to say that, but they were smart in building this track with a fairly small radius uh, for a larger radius uh, they wouldn't have enough centrifugal force uh, to get all the way around. Now another similar situation is when we have uh, something going at a constant rate of rotation, say uh, revolutions per minute. Uh, in that case the closer we are to the center of the circle, the smaller the centrifugal force, or the farther out that we are on the circle, the greater the centrifugal force. So this little girl on this turntable, uh, if she goes in towards the center, she doesn't feel a lot of centrifugal force, but if she's on the outer rim, then the centrifugal force is largest. Now, uh, this is uh, an idea for if you want to simulate gravity 
in outer space, say on a space station, then if the station has a large radius, then even a relatively slow rotation uh, would give enough centrifugal force to simulate gravity for people who were in the uh, compartments along the outer rim. Uh, you, uh, you could also get more centrifugal force by spinning it uh, faster. On the other hand, you don't want the force of gravity to be um, much different from where your feet are than where your, your head is, so it's better to have a large uh, space station with a slow rotation to get this uh, effect of simulated gravity produced by centrifugal force. So in uh, summary, the centripetal force is the inward force that actually deflects the path of action into circular motion. Uh, but often we uh, like to think about the uh, apparent outward force which uh, results from uh, inertia and we call that outward force uh, centrifugal. Now the centrifugal force depends on the speed and on the uh, radius of the turn. So the higher the speed, the greater the centrifugal force. The smaller the radius of the turn, the greater the centripetal for us, uh, sorry, centrifugal force. And then finally, if we have a constant rate of rotation, constant rotation frequency, say in revolutions per minute, then the farther we are from the circle, then the greater the centrifugal force. So that's the basics about uh, centrifugal force. We'll uh, see that appearing again uh, when we study all sorts of different motion, including um, character animation. So we'll see you then.